Welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm taking a look at this. Ravel's 172nd Sopwith F1 Camel. Join me as I take a quick look inside the box and find out what's really included. Hi, I'm Matt and you're watching Model Minutes. Before I start the video, a quick shout out to my patrons. From as little as $1 a month, you can help support the channel and gain exclusive perks and access to early content. Thanks for your support. So today I'm taking a look at this Ravel Sopwith Camel in 172nd scale. On the front of the box we've got a nice image of the aircraft in a dogfight over the trenches. The rear of the box features information about other kits in the range. The sides of the box feature information about the kit and also safety warnings. Most of the information presented is multilingual. Let's take a look inside the box. The first thing I take a look at is the information sheet. This piece of paper features multilingual information regarding the health and safety of the kit. And here are the instructions. As you can see on the front there is an image of the completed model, complete with rigging. But unfortunately, as it's in black and white, it's very hard to make out. Information about the real Sopwith Camel is presented in different languages. Safety information and a key to all the symbols in the construction of the model is included. On the rear of the booklet you have the standard Ravel paint instructions. As is usual from Ravel, they've annotated the different paint colours by letters in the paint scheme. I find this to be quite infuriating as, for example, D here is Ravel's matte number 8 black paint. Why they couldn't just annotate that in the kit, I don't know. Because Ravel used this method, I tend to find I actually go through and annotate on here the individual colours that I require rather than using the lettering system because otherwise I'll be flicking backwards and forwards continuously throughout the build. Here we can see there's a sprue map which is quite clearly laid out and it also hints to me that there aren't that many parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps in the construction, but actually the last step is all about the rigging placement. No rigging is included in this kit, which is a bit of a shame, so I'll have to go out and find something for myself. As you can see, the steps are fairly well drawn and quite simple, but they're quite small and if they were a little bit bigger, they'd be easier to read. The paint scheme seems to be fairly simple to complete, but again, as it's produced in black and white, it's quite difficult sometimes to tell the difference between the, the different shades of grey that they use to annotate the different colours. The decals seem to be well printed and to the normal standard from Ravel. I particularly like the playing card decal as they're pretty well detailed, and they add a bit of colour and interest to the model. What you notice here is that the red dots are not actually printed in the center of the RAF roundels. I believe that's because a lot of the time when they print these things, they have registry errors and they can be printed off center. A lot more recent kits do actually have these already printed in the center as they seem to have overcome these issues recently. But clearly at the time these were produced, that was not the case. Let's take a look inside the bag. Two cream-coloured sprues contain the main parts of the kit. I can't help but notice there's a big gap here. That tells me that there might be a slightly different kit with a different version of something included here. But clearly for this kit it's not needed. The parts are well moulded, but as you can see, there is quite a bit of flash present in places and also marks left over from the moulding process. It's particularly noticeable here on the pilot. The Vickers machine guns are present, but they too also suffer from flash, and they will require cleaning up before adding to the model. There isn't much detail in way of a cockpit, which is a bit of a shame. But I guess if you're going to put a pilot in there, it doesn't really matter, seeing as this is such a small model. The engine doesn't feature much detail. I've previously built an Academy Sopwith Camel and I feel that that might have been slightly superior in the, in the detail department. But one drawback it did have was that it didn't come with a pilot. So that's what you get inside the kit. 
a couple of sprues which don't have that many parts which do suffer with some moulding flaws and uh, quite a bit of flash which will require cleaning up. A set of decals which look to be quite well printed but I guess I'll have to see how they go on the model. A set of instructions which looks to be quite easy to follow but does suffer from the usual problems with the Revell instructions, an information sheet and the box. So what do I think? In conclusion looks to be an interesting little kit but it does have uh, a few things that I'm going to have to fix uh, as I build it. The information about rigging placement is a welcome inclusion but it looks to be quite complicated so I'm not sure whether I'll actually represent that but I'll have to have a think about it. Let me know what you think of the contents of this kit in the comments below and also make sure you let me know if you'd like to see this one built. All that's left to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the workbench again next time.